Okay, so this is another, um, this is a deep dive on networking and Kubernetes uh, because networking is a key piece, you know, and if um, if we get a feel of what it's like, it makes it life easier for the application team as well as for the platform team. So in this, I am just, this is my basic, uh, I just have an example where I have one manager and two worker nodes. This is the cluster I have set up on EC2 instances in Amazon AWS. But this can be on anywhere on-prem or um, on any other cloud. But And so this is not EKS or this is not a managed. This is basic, I set it up using Kubadium because I want to explore you know, the IPs and I want to do, show how it works. So, so if you're using a managed cluster, then you don't really have to worry about uh, the side arrange for the pod networking or the node, but still, you know, having an idea of how it works really helps. So in this cluster, if you see, I have one manager and two worker nodes. So what, when we start talking about setting up networking, so this one is in a VPC, right? So my VPC has subnets. So the IP range for the workers and manager, these are all VMs. I have small VMs, two CPU uh, basic I think it's uh, T2 large, so four CPUs, and then some 16 or 8 GB memory, basic VMs. And each one of them, as you can see, has an IP range. Uh, so each one has an IP address, and the node network CIDR, right, which is my uh, range is 172.31.0.0 slash 16. So which means how many nodes can I have in the cluster? So if you go to the next this is how it's set up right so the cider range is divided so normally when we set up pods in a network slash 16 is actually um, around six five five three six around those number of um, nodes you can have IP IP addresses you can have so if this is my one worker node it is has an IP of 172.31.95.239 and this itself has a side range of slash 24. So this is an internal network 10.244.1.1. And this is coming from my internal um, subnets within this within this worker node has an internal side range, right? And the um, slash 24 is basically, if you see, you can have 256 IP addresses in that on that node so basically you can have around so basically they normally say you can have around 110 or even like more pods because the ips get assigned to others you know um systems and then sometimes um others running on the node so it's always advisable to have a limit on the number of pods so normally a lot of managed um, clusters like GKE and all they usually advise they stop at 110 or even around that those number of pods per node which has a slash 24 range so this is the same for all three of my nodes now this is the pod cider right pod network side is 10.244.0.0 so if you can see this one is 10.241.0 and this is 2.0 so if I had more worker nodes, it will be probably it will the next will be 10.244.3.0. So each host has its own set of IP addresses, which are getting assigned, and which when pods get created, they will be assigned those. So let's look at the cluster itself. So if I go here, right? So this is my I have three nodes. That's this is what I just showed over here. Let me clear it. So if you do get nodes on my cluster minus O wide, you can see that there is an, these are the IP addresses. The last one is not ready, so let's not look at it. But the top three are the manager and the two worker nodes. So these are the IPs of each one of them. And these are, now if I do, if I want to get more information, I can do git auto cluster info. So, the basic is this is running on 18 which is the master ip that's where the control plane is and we did, and core dns is running at also of the same but it's running at um, 
uh, it's running uh, with a with, uh, with a different you know like uh, URL. So code DNS, I will talk about it later. So let's see the cluster info dump. So the cluster info dump gives uh, as you can see a lot of information about what is in the. Let me write down. See, so this so it the cluster dump will have information about the pod ciders. So this matches with what we we just saw. So each node has a pod cider. So if I uh, and similarly, so this was the pod cider. Another important thing is the service service range, right? So the services as we let's go back to here right now. Service comes into play when we have a deployment. So when we are talking about a deployment and the deployment will have two pods, let's say this one running on this node or another and we definite so we need a service right service endpoint that will be hit by the ingress because these pod ip addresses there is no external network it's external connect there's no external uh, ingress coming into these pods directly nobody can directly hit them so they are running inside the cluster and what we see over here is an overlay network by which how these pods communicate they know about each other right so they are all and each um, Kubernetes implementation has an overlay network. It can be Calico, it can be Flannel or Selenium that I'm going to discuss all the three later in this uh, um, session. But right now, we let's talk about the service. So when we, we have a deployment, the deployment needs a service because service is basically you can have a load balancer service or a, a node port service. But that's how anything from outside will hit your application you uh, so anything from outside hits the service if it's a node port directly or through a load balancer or through an ingress proxy it will hit the service so the service also has to have a cider range so in our example if i go back to my uh, this one i can see from the cluster info dump my service cluster ip range is 10.96.0.0 slash 12 so this is the total number of services that can be created so at some point right if your pod range if your node starts to hit the network exhaustion because if you already have so many pods then the best option is to scale up on the nodes so if you add one more node because of uh, the um, node uh, node range to be slash 16 you can continue to add nodes but each node can only have limited number of pods let's say then you then you want to uh, scale up the node to add more pods from that node because it also uh, when the apps are running there's also consumption on the cpu and memory so it's always better to um, scale up on the nodes and then so you can see that these are the number of services that can be uh, created okay so <clears throat> Let's do a little bit on the CNI, which is the Container Network Interface. CNI forms the networking between the containers and containers run inside the pods, right? So it's, um, why do we need um, CNI? Why do we need a, a whole, you know, network interface and what is it about? So we, every, I, every container with, which runs in the pod um, and the pods, they need to have an IP address. So CNI manages the provisioning and managing of IP addresses to the pods. It's basically IP management and assigning the IP address to the containers and the pods. So mostly there is uh, some, there are different uh, CNIs out there uh, provided like Flannel and Calico and then there's also Selenium and Weave there and every product uses its own but the basic I want to just list out the basic differences. Calico is the most popular one as compared to Flannel. I have implemented Flannel in my network, uh, in my cluster on the AWS um, uh, my, uh, cluster. Uh, I will just show you. But basically, Flannel is simple implementation. It just provides the IP overlay network and it provides IP addresses whenever a new a uh, container comes up it provides an ip address to it that's it and it does not it can you cannot like uh, we cannot expect a lot of flexibility security performance with flannel it's just a basic overlay network I, if you compare that with calico it's more powerful because if you see it supports a lot of other things like it 
network policies implementation it also integrates with istio service mesh so if you if i'm using flannel and i implement a network policy on my kubernetes cluster so what's a network policy network policies uh, can be applied to namespaces and to pods so if you want a set of pods to only receive traffic from a different group of pods in a different namespace network policy helps you do that so network policy is very it should be implemented for security reasons like for example if you have backend set of pods uh, running uh, some stateful uh, pods you don't want anybody else other than the the front end pods to send traffic to it network policies can be used and service mesh i have other lectures in my uh, channel on service mesh it's basically uh, sending traffic within the pods and within the services it's basically called east west traffic so all that is not possible if i'm using flannel so it does not support and the other thing is again it's a basic network layer layer three overlay network so in the there are seven osi model there are seven layers and flannel just supports it runs on layer three but calico doesn't use that it is more powerful it uses bgp which is border gateway protocol it uses a routing protocol so it gets uh, it has a more features as compared to flannel and finally Flannel again is just providing connectivity when you're connecting from one part to another in on diff, running on different hosts. But Calico can all is Calico will have security and more administration in addition to these parts uh, to the connectivity between parts and uh, nodes. So now if I go to if I show you right, um, let me show you. So if I lo look at um, grab Flannel. So if I see I am I am running four pods in so I have I have four nodes right uh, and I am using and so the flannel runs if you see uh, there are it's run as a daemon set so if I do minus o y So if you see this, basically it so it's a daemon set, which means it will run on every node in the cluster. And if you see, basically it forms an overlay network, which will be spread across all these four nodes. And then it will provide connectivity for pods within the cluster. And if I do um, daemon set, right, if I do get daemon set, you will see that I have cube flannel daemon set. And if I do a describe on it, you can just see uh, it's a basic setup. Uh, I just downloaded it from Quay. It's a, any a, a typical version. Uh, it's just um, there's nothing uh, more uh, you know fancy about it, um, and it shows the basically the limits and the requests uh, for each of the part. 